Usually I purchase the Ultra version, but not this year. This year I went with the less expensive Galaxy S23 Plus. And I did this because for one, it's $200 cheaper, but two, it's pretty much the same phone. And the extra perks you get with the Ultra aren't that justifiable to me, in my opinion. I mean, the S23 Plus is just a bit smaller, which makes it easier to use with one hand. It doesn't have a quad HD display, but the 1080p panel is still really gorgeous. The cameras aren't as powerful, but they're still really good. It doesn't come with as much RAM, but I found eight gigabytes to be more than fine. It has a slightly smaller battery capacity, but then again, the S23 Ultra is going to consume our battery life in general because the screen is bigger and has a higher resolution. The Ultra can be upgraded to a higher storage capacity of one terabyte, but 512 gigabytes on the S23 Plus is more than enough for most people. And the S23 Plus doesn't have a stylus, which could be a deal breaker to some, but for most people, including myself, you'll rarely ever use it. With the S22 Ultra, I only use the stylus when I want to write a bit smaller within my social media post, or when I want to sign a document. That's it. Plus, I'm a huge sucker for flat screens, so when I heard that the Ultra still had curved edges, that instantly pushed me over to the other side, and even though both the back and front panels are flat on the S23 Plus, the frame of the phone isn't. It still has a slight curve, which does make it easier to hold. Nothing like the iPhone 14, which makes the edges completely flat and a bit more awkward to use. Plus the rear glass is frosted, so fingerprints are non-existent on this phone. Only on the edges did I notice some minor smudges. I also felt really confident when using the flagship because it's made out of very premium materials that give it extra protection and a hefty weight. The frame is made out of this really strong armor aluminum and the front and back glass are the strongest glass variant from Cornering Gorilla known as the Victus 2. It's even water resistant with an IP68 rating. So a very strong device and it's managed well after three weeks of use. Even without a screen protector, it never received any damage. No scratches, dents or cracks. And yes, I've dropped it multiple times. I won't lie though, as strong as any phone is, I will always slap a case on it because you just never know what could happen. I ended up getting this camel leather case from Samsung. I think it's absolutely gorgeous and I love how it makes the rear cameras flush so that I can finally use the phone flat on its back without it wobbling around. It is a bit hefty though at around $50, but you'll be able to get it for free if you buy the phone directly from Samsung's site because they automatically give every customer an extra 100 bucks to use within their store. The only thing I don't like about the design of the S23 Plus is that the side buttons are a bit too high and they're not as tactile as I like them to be. I constantly need to readjust my hand whenever I want to mess around with the volume rocker and they feel really mushy whenever I press them. Besides that, it's one of the best looking phones I've ever purchased. The cream color really caught my eye and it looks even better in person. When I actually use the phone, I can honestly say it was one of the fastest devices I've ever used. The only phone I can compare it to with similar speeds is the OnePlus 11. And that's just because they both carry the same chipset, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Apps opened insanely quick Animations were buttery smooth and playing video games was an enormous pleasure. Even unlocking the phone with the under display fingerprint sensor or face unlock was insanely quick and reliable. Plus I love that it still uses an ultrasonic fingerprint sensor cause unlike most Androids, this allows you to unlock the phone even when the screen is off, making it even faster to use. And that's another reason why I didn't get the Ultra. Since it's got the same processor, the speeds will be pretty much the same. True, it does have a larger RAM capacity, which will theoretically make multitasking slightly better, but in the real world, most people won't notice a difference. So the design has held up well, the performance has been spectacular. What about the battery life? It was also great. It had no problem lasting me the entire day and would usually leave me at around 30%. To be more specific, the screen on time was usually about five and a half hours, which May not seem like a lot, but it really is because I'm a really heavy user. I have Bluetooth constantly enabled for my Pixel smartwatch, brightness set to near max, Wi-Fi enabled throughout the day, and I'm always on social media trying to find out what's happening in the tech world. But if I took it easy and let the battery drain to zero, I could probably get even six or seven hours. It's not the longest lasting battery life I've ever used, but I definitely say it's above average. It also has amazing charging speeds. Just like the Ultra, it can charge at a rate of up to 45 watts. And this saved me a bunch of times when I forgot to charge the phone 
overnight. I can fully juice the phone from zero to 100% in just under an hour, much faster than the Google Pixel 7 or iPhone 14, but still definitely not as fast as most Chinese phones out there. It also sucks that it doesn't come with a charger in the box. So you'll have to resort to an old charger that probably won't even support the phone's fast charging speed. Instead, I picked up some chargers from Anchor to obtain those fast charging speeds. My favorite choice is a 313 charger because it's very compact and supports super fast charging 2.0 which guarantees 45 watts of peak charging power. That'll mean that you can fully juice up most phones at their top charging speed, including the entire Galaxy S23 lineup. Plus, unlike most chargers out there, this one is tiny, 30% smaller than Samsung's 45 watt original charger, just to give you a perspective. So you can fit it just about anywhere, which makes it great for travel. Plus it's powered by GAN technology, which gives it excellent heat dissipation. A lot of great advantages packed into such a tiny form factor. If you want an alternative, look towards Anchor's 312 charger. It's selling for $19.99, but from March 6th to the 12th, it will have a discount bringing the price down to $12.70. It's still very small and still guarantees 25 watts of super fast charging speeds, which is perfect for the base model Galaxy S23. And it's got multi-protect technology to safeguard your devices from over voltage or high temperatures. So if you want the best bang for your buck, check out these two Anchor Ace chargers linked down below. And just like its brothers, the Galaxy S23 Plus supports key and PMA wireless charging at up to 15 watts and reverse wireless charging at 4.5 watts. Not bad. The cameras were also not bad, but they're not going to really stand out from the sea of other phones that also have great cameras. It's still carrying the same camera hardware as last year's S22 Plus. It just has a slightly updated 12 megapixel front camera, which does a fantastic job of giving you lots of detail, but the coloring needs some work. I was much more satisfied with the results from the rear cameras. This is the type of phone that you can take almost anywhere, no matter the lighting situation, and it will capture the scene in great detail. When there's lots of lights, the shots have great contrast, exposure, and amazing shadowing. The only thing that it does tend to do is oversaturate and slightly over brighten the shot to make the scene pop more, but that could be great for the grand majority who usually just want an eye-catching picture to post on social media. For more natural looking shots, phones like the Pixel 7, OnePlus 11, or even the iPhone are better options. Its ultra-wide lens is also really great at capturing large open landscapes, especially since it has a huge point of view and its telephoto lens does a fantastic job of capturing objects that are out of reach. Not as powerful as the more expensive Ultra variant, which can optically zoom at up to 10x, but still better than most phones out there. Still, extreme digitally zoomed in shots at around 30x aren't going to be as good as some other devices out there like the Pixel 7 Pro because of limitations on the hardware. During the night, it's also a hit or miss situation. You'll either get a really impressive shot that has great detail and not that much noise, or you'll get something that looks over brightened and unnatural. Plus there's also a good amount of shutter lag which has resulted in me missing some shots entirely. Still, as a whole, I'm really happy with these cameras. It's a versatile setup that can capture most scenes amazingly, and it'll be more than enough for the average Joe. As for the software, it's running the latest One UI 5.1 version, which is on top of Android 13, and Samsung always provides excellent update commitments. This year is no different since they promised that the S23 Plus will get at least four years of OS updates and five years of security patches, so the software should last up until 2028. Much better than most Androids out there, including Google's own Pixel 7 devices. And what can I say? One UI is the most powerful and customizable software in the Android ecosystem. Any feature that you can think of can most likely be found within One UI and you will always discover more when you start diving into the settings. Some of my favorite features that are exclusive to One UI include Bixby Text Call, which is similar to Google's Screen Call feature. It lets the Bixby Assistant answer a phone call for me. And unlike Google's Screen Call feature, Bixby Text Call enables you to type out any response within the phone call to have Bixby say it out loud. It can get pretty hilarious. I also love that I can stack widgets on the home screen. It keeps things nice and tidy while providing me with information quickly. I can set individual call backgrounds for each of my favorite contacts. Makes it a lot more personal and easy to tell who's calling from far away. And when I take a screenshot, I love that I can extract text from any photo by pressing on that little T. It saves me so much time. 
that's just the tip of the iceberg. I don't want to dive too deep into One UI because that's a whole video on its own. But if you want to learn more about what One UI is capable of, I'll drop my review of the software in the cards. I'd say the only thing holding back One UI from being perfect is the looks. The UI is really outdated and most people I've talked to have agreed. I mean, the last time Samsung really updated its looks was back in 2018 when they first launched One UI. And I know some people don't want it to change, but a refreshed look may bring in a much bigger audience. It definitely worked for Google when they released their huge Android 12 update. Phone calls and data speeds were also really fantastic on this phone. I never really had any call drops, which is impressive considering that I live in a very rural area with spotty internet. It also supports 5G millimeter waves, so I got really fast data speeds, um, even on my mid-range carrier, Mint Mobile. And of course, just like every other Samsung phone, it supports the four major US carriers. Now, even though this phone is cheaper than the big boy S23 Ultra, it's still really expensive, selling for a thousand dollars in the US, a thousand. And of course you could trade in your current device to get that lower price tag, but Samsung's trading values this year really suck. I mean, they literally only give you 500 bucks for a Galaxy S22 Ultra, which was selling for more than double of that last year. With that said, do I think the Galaxy S23 Plus is worth it? I think it is, especially since this phone is made to last. Aside from a fancy stylus, it really is the complete package. You get four years of OS updates on a very powerful software, the fastest speeds on a smartphone yet, really great cameras, a solid battery life with 45 watts of fast charging speeds, water resistance, 5G millimeter wave, and really strong materials that also provide a beautiful looking design. You can't go wrong with this phone. And I do think it's a better bang for your buck than the S23 Ultra. That's if you don't mind missing out on a stylus or a bigger screen. But the only reason I wouldn't recommend the S23 Plus is if you already own last year's model. You're just gonna have the same experience with slightly faster speeds and slightly better battery life. I would wait one more year if I were you. By the way, click this video right here if you'd like to learn how to really customize One UI and take it to the next level. Either way, that's been my experience with the Galaxy S23 Plus. I'll be sure to include it within the YouTube's product tag feature in the lower left corner of this video, sponsored by YouTube themselves, and within the description of this video to purchase it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!